Matt with Meat Church and welcome to Traeger Kitchen Live. So we're deep in the heart of Texas, in my backyard, in the Meat Church Live Fire Kitchen, coming to teach you guys about Texas brisket. So I'm pretty stoked uh, given our current times, how a lot of folks are at home and not able to get out. I'm, uh, I'm excited that my partner Traeger is bringing these live um, lessons to you guys. We had to cancel a bunch of our classes that we do. Um, if you don't know about Meat Church, we kind of travel around teaching barbecue. We teach barbecue right here in this kitchen uh, in our own backyard in Waxahachie. So when I got the opportunity uh, to come on here and share my passion for barbecue and particularly brisket, um, I was super, super, super excited. So um, what a great week too. Uh, Traeger just launched their new app. I'm sure you guys have all downloaded it. There's uh, somebody you know on there. There's a brisket recipe. If you don't pay too good attention or don't take good notes, um, you can get my step-by-step -step smoked brisket in the app. Um, and then you should definitely swipe and go to Instagram because that's what we're known for. Uh, Meet Church Instagram if you don't know us. So without further ado, let's get rolling. Uh, so today, what I thought I would do is I'm gonna show you guys a traditional Texas brisket. This is not a competition brisket. Um, this is what you would find if you go to barbecue joint uh, in this state. So I'm gonna do a couple things with the trim that some people think may be a little aggressive, a little, um, you know, a little more than you'd like to trim. I'll talk about that when we get there, but I'm gonna tell you why we do it and you can choose if you wanna go that far or not. Um, but today we're starting out with an amazing piece of meat. This is a Snake River Farms Wagyu brisket. Um, I can personally attest uh, to how awesome these briskets are. Last year at the Houston Rodeo World Championship, uh, myself, uh, Chad Ward, barbecue director at, uh, um, at Traeger, and then Chris Hatcher, we finaled uh, at the Houston Rodeo on brisket with one of these briskets on a Timberline. So the exact same thing. Um, we're gonna prepare it a little bit different uh, today. <clears throat> so as you can see, this is a super beautiful brisket. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about the anatomy of a brisket, and today you're in for a treat. Not only am I teaching you a traditional Texas brisket, I'm also gonna show you how to make Kansas City burn-ins. So I wholeheartedly think that Texas is the king of barbecue. I love all the regions of barbecue. Um, I appreciate the heritage behind them and why they do what they do. But with that said, I really think beef is king um, and Texas is who made brisket a thing. And so that's what we're here for. But a Kansas City burn-in may be one of the best bites in barbecue. I mean, it definitely is one of the best bites in barbecue. Uh, we're gonna show you how to make that, um, how to bring that out of the point meat here and talk to you about other cuts that you could use um, if you don't want to use a brisket to make those. You guys have heard of pork belly burn-ins and some people talk about poor man's burnt-ins with chuck roast and, and things like that. So we'll, we'll show you the concepts and, and you can go um, apply it to whatever you want. I mean, I got an email two weeks ago from a guy that said he made tofu burn-ins. And uh, I mean, this is meat church, uh, not vegetable church, but uh, you know, vegetarian church, but uh, you know, hey, whatever floats your boat. So you can apply this to, to whatever you want. So a little bit about us, uh, Matt Pittman Meat Church, um, I'm a barbecue uh, partner with Traeger Grills um, with our company. So we're uh, proud ambassadors of Traeger, um, love the brand. There's nobody doing uh, in outdoor cooking what Traeger's doing. So we're excited they let us come on and kind of share our products uh, with you today. Um, but we're gonna be using a bunch of different things today. I've talked to you about the meat. Uh, we're gonna be cooking on a Traeger Timberline 1300 D2 connected to my phone. Um, we are using oak pellets. Uh, we'll talk about you know why we use oak here in just a little bit. Uh, when we make our burn-ins, we're going to be using uh, the sugar lip sriracha because a traditional Kansas City burn-in has a little bit of sweet and a little kick. So sugar lip sriracha sounds like sweet with a big kick. So we're going with that. And then of course we're going to season with the best brisket rub on the market, Meat Church Holy Cow, and we're going to top it off with a little bit of Holy Gospel. This two to one ratio is the one two knockout punch uh, for your brisket at home. All right, get a little water. Okay, it's not water. And let's get going. I'm gonna glove up. I mean, I'm by myself, so you wear gloves or not. <clears throat> so you guys can ask questions in the comments today. Um, I've, got, I've got someone here, the famous Robinson Barbecue. Going to be reading off your live questions coming in from the comments. We're also going to be doing a Q&A uh, at the end so we can pile up a bunch of questions there. And then 15 minutes after this you know, hour or so lesson is over, 
Uh, we're going to do a happy hour with my buddy uh, Chad Ward over on Instagram. So you can go to Traeger's Instagram and, you know, 15 minutes after this wraps, we'll be having some uh, just kind of fun and have a drink and talk about what we did. All right, so let's get going. Brisket. This working muscle of the cow, you guys probably know, pretty tough piece of meat. I said earlier, brisket became a thing down here in Lockhart, Texas. Two muscles on the brisket. So here you've got the flat, and underneath here that you can't really see real well is the point. And as I start to trim it, uh, I'll start to expose that point a little more so you can see it better. But if you use my gloves as an example, this is kind of how those muscles lay. So you have the flat and you have the point, and they're kind of offset. I always joke that it's like an Oreo cookie that's offset. And when we go to make burn ins, we're going to want to take some of this fat out of there, which is like the cream in the middle of that cookie. So nonetheless, so let's talk about trimming a brisket. There's a lot of ways to trim a brisket. Um, and we'll get into how do we cook it, fat up, fat down. We're going to talk about, you know, are we wrapping this with foil? Are we wrapping it with paper? Are we putting it in a pan? What are the differences, pros and cons? You know, I always tell people there's not one way to make barbecue. Uh, there's no right or wrong way. It's just kind of whatever you choose. You know, I choose what I'm doing based on my circumstance. So there may be a time that I wrap this in foil. Maybe a time that I wrap it in paper. There may be a reason I trim it one way versus how I trim it another way. I'm here today to kind of educate you with what I'd call the why that people do different things and you can choose what you want to do. You could do what I call a really minimal trim on this whole pack of brisket. You could take off the hard pieces of fat, kind of trim up the edges, season it and put it on and yield maximum you know, brisket and there's nothing wrong with that. And as we talk about trimming it, I'll tell you the good and bad about that. Like on this, on this um, flat part of the brisket, it's quite thin down here. Well, you'll have a choice. Do you want to trim that off or do you want to cook it? It's fine to leave it. And I'll tell you, if I'm spending the amount of money that a Snake River costs, I'm probably keeping it. Uh, because if you're cooking this at home in your backyard for your family, if you don't trim this off, what's going to happen is obviously this is going to be a little more dried out compared to like the money slices you get right here. But, but who cares? You can, you can feed this to your kids. You can donate it to the neighbors, whatever. It's not going to be bad brisket. Um, you know, just won't be as superior of a bite as here. But I'll, I'll save that. Uh, when we talk about trimming here in just a little bit. So let's get to work. Now, I really only use two knives in barbecue, to be honest with you. Uh, I use a fillet or boning knife. So this is just a Victor X really flexible. This is a cheap knife. This is 20 bucks. But I like this to trim with. Uh, I almost feel like they're disposable. Sharpen it, last several trimmings. But this is how I can make the quickest work of a brisket. It's just my preference. I've got friends that trim these with brisket slicers, you know, just whatever you're comfortable with. And then at the end, when I go to teach you how to slice a brisket, we're going to use an actual brisket slicer. So let's get to work. We're going to start on the meat side. I don't call it the top or the bottom because that, you know, kind of depends on which way you're going to cook it. Uh, so I'm going to start on the meat side. We're going to get to work. Uh, and this will probably be the longest part of what we're uh, doing today. And I'm going to try to talk to you. Uh, throughout the process so that so that you guys can see the entire brisket here on the meat side anything that is thick or hard fat needs to come off why is that it won't render in the cook so where this is really thick right here or anything you can grab and kind of pull up like this I would probably remove that in my opinion you do not need to be focused on getting hundred percent of this white off here like this small stuff right here not a big deal it's gonna render out plus surprise skip to the end I'm gonna cook fat up we'll get to that so when this meat side is down, a lot of that stuff with the heat source for Traeger is going to cook off. So anyway, again, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so we've got some questions. Robinson Barbecue. If you don't have Wagyu, what grade do you recommend? Great question. So if you don't have Wagyu, what grade do you recommend? Let me talk about that. So the grade's a B. Kind of the lowest tier. I mean, you have ungraded, but let's, you know, the, the cheaper cheap is select beef. Then you have choice. Then you have prime. That's usually where most people stay. And then you have fancy wagyu if you want to have like a you know a really good dinner you know for me in texas the good thing for us is prime beef is really inexpensive the difference in prime beef and choice so choice beef prime beef the price difference is like 10 20 cents a pound so you might as well just buy a prime brisket a lot of people go to costco place like that and, and it's pretty inexpensive um, i tell people you know taste wagyu see what the price difference is and then taste it and see if you think it's that um you know that much better than regular i mean th these are amazing uh, everyone, the who's who of barbecue competes with this particular brisket, so I know these are really, really good. Now, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to start trimming, and, and, and we can field some more questions. I'm going to start here at the top. I'm going to remove this hard piece of fat, and I'm going to cut this deckle off. 
by the way, this brisket's cold. I like to pull this right out of the fridge. It's easier to trim if it's super cold. So if you have it sitting out in your kitchen for a little while outside and it gets real loose and shifty and your knife isn't sharp, you're in trouble. Sharp knife, cold brisket, that's the way to the promised land. Okay, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a couple of these thick spots off right here first. Any new rubs coming out? That's a good question. Uh, you know, we came out with the Holy Voodoo in November, which has become our number one rub. We are, um, we are, I think we've pretty well finalized our chili seasoning. And as you can tell, it's, I don't know if it's chilly weather here in Texas. You know, all my friends here are wearing, my friends, two friends, we're social distancing. Shorts, t-shirts, obviously very comfortable here. I'm not sure if it's chilly weather. I asked that question on social media last week or two weeks ago and was told, yeah, it's chilly weather. So I think chili seasoning may be next. put your hand underneath to kind of raise it up if you want and again I'm gonna cook fat up so I'm not too terribly worried about that if you feel something hard take it off do you ever inject? question is do I ever inject very good question I don't inject in the backyard and that's coming from a guy that sells an injection uh, you know com competition barbecue you've got to inject uh, they call it one bite barbecue you've got to pack the most flavor and moisture into one bite because the judge is going to take one bite of your barbecue and if it doesn't just blow their mouth up they're going to move on to the next guy so in competition everybody's injecting you kind of have to in the backyard i'm not mad if you do it but a, you know traditionally we wouldn't do it and i a wagyu brisket at home doesn't need it all that intermuscular fat this thing's gonna be unreal without putting anything in it i'm going to just kind of slice out this decal So for burn ends, do I separate the point and flat? I'll show y'all that in a little bit. We're, we cooked our brisket whole today, but I also, so, okay, to answer your question, I don't normally fully separate. If I wanted to take this brisket and make, a, make slices and burnt ends, you're starting to see the point now, what I would do is I would make an incision right here on this fat line, and I would basically fillet this flat up and remove this fat, exposing the point but I wouldn't completely pull them apart. They would be attached for a couple inches and I would cook it, you know, probably meat side up with all this point meat. I would not completely separate it, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, a lot of people I know completely separate them, but I like Aaron Franklin think that a whole packer cooks better when the two muscles are combined with the fat. So I don't like to completely separate them. Like I, if somebody emails me and says, hey, how do I cook a brisket flat? So I was in barbecue pitmasters one year and my nemesis was a brisket flat but I just don't care for flats. You, you don't see anybody in Texas going and buy a flat normally. It's just not that common here. What size brisket do you use for burn? So this, great question, what size brisket? This was a 15 pounder. I should have said that up front. This is my perfect size brisket. I like to go buy a 15 pounder because normally I would take three pounds out of it or something like that, left with a 12 pound brisket. And we're gonna cook at 275 today. I can get a 12 pound brisket done in 10 hours at 275. Uh, so I just like the consistency. A 15-pounder doesn't taste any different from a 10-pounder or a 20-pounder. Uh, but I say this all the time. You don't want to go buy a 23-pound brisket because brisket, it's going to take you all day and half the night to cook it. So unless your family wants to eat at 4 in the morning, I don't suggest a 23-pound brisket. So I'd go with one kind of middle of the road um, and then, you know, slice it to eat it. Uh, so just cut off what you want, vac seal, put the rest away. There you go. Okay, I'll see more of this decal here in a minute, so that's, that's enough of that for now. I'm gonna take one more pass right here. I'm gonna let this fly, enjoy the fat. We're in Texas, it is what it is. We got smart flies in my kitchen. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna trim this edge up so it's really rough from where it was uh, butchered, and you see how gray that is? I want that out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make what I call kind of a thick slice of bacon, uh, slice down the edge just to just to clean it up basically. I don't like this messy stuff and so I want to make it nice and even. My goal by the way is a nice symmetrical brisket. So the more symmetrical the more evenly it cooks in the cook chamber. So that's my goal. So as you can see it's not too thick. Now we're really going to talk about this when I get into more aggressive trimming I'm going to do in a little bit but I save all of my meat because I'm gonna grind it up. So I'm gonna say that up front. Before somebody comes in and says, man, that guy trimmed way too much off that brisket. You don't have to trim as much as I trim. You trim as little or as much as you want, but don't waste anything. We're gonna take this meat and we're gonna grind it. 
Last week we made brisket chili. Last week we made uh, brisket hamburgers. Um, we can use it for guisada. Uh, I mean, the burgers, like I said, are amazing. So you can get an inexpensive grinder for like 99 bucks or so, and you can leverage all that meat. And then we take the fat, the soft fat, not the decal, and we render it down into brisket tallow, which is like liquid gold. And so in our house, when we need oils and things like that, we just use the tallow instead. And if you're on keto, it's really healthy for you. It's a good fat, so it's a win-win. So whenever I'm done, no matter what this looks like, there's not gonna be any waste from what we're doing. I try to respect the animal and full utilization of this. There's only two briskets on a cow. Um, not trying to be a tree hugger, but you know, honor this animal, we need to use everything we can. So anything that comes off here, I'm not gonna waste it. So keep that in mind. You know, when you're going to trim it, if you don't have use for the trim, maybe you don't trim as much. Why cut the fat out? Why cut the fat out? So fat is flavor, but in moderation. Like here on the decal, super hard, couple inches of fat. If I left that and cooked this brisket, when I go to make my slices, I'm gonna have this gigantic fat pocket right in the middle that's, you're not gonna eat it and you're just gonna have to cut it out. So I'm trying to get down to just the appropriate amount of fat, basically. Okay, I'm gonna flip over now and go on the fat side. And when you look on the back of a brisket, the entire thing is not overly thick. It's actually quite thin through here. And then just right here is it thick. I mean, so that's four inches, couple inches. This is when people say you need to shave the, the fat side down to a quarter inch, that's what they mean right there. And it's, it, this one isn't overly fat. And I'm gonna tell you, when we go right here and trim, I wanna be real careful because I don't wanna go, like right here, this brisket's already scalped a little, it came that way. Um, I can always take more fat off, I can't add it back on. So I'm just gonna just slightly, basically just slightly shave some of that. It doesn't need a whole lot. A little thick right here, um, maybe a hair right there, but this one doesn't need much. And again, I'm gonna cook fat up and this fat with the seasoning rendered in this timberline is the best bite. So I don't want to get rid of this epic taste. I'm going to start down here and just kind of cut off this excess. So that's super thick fat. Are small briskets more tender? Are small, are small briskets more tender? No, not necessarily. Um, you know, we cook cook a lot of different beef here. Uh, we use a lot of 44 farms out of Cameron, Texas, and they're small briskets because they, they slaughter younger. And that isn't that in itself doesn't make them more tender. We're gonna cook any brisket till it's tender. So we're gonna get all the sizes there. Okay, I got lucky with this one. There's not a whole lot back here. And you can tell this one, you know, sat out a little longer than I wanted. All right, we'll do a little more trim there in just a second. Now I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do one more thing to this brisket. And this is where you got a decision to make. Actually, I'm gonna do two more things to the brisket. So this hard fat in here, some people will just kind of grab this and they'll basically kind of, I'm just gonna use the word carve. They'd kind of carve that out right there, right? And I could take my knife and I could just, just kind of slice this out. Well, and you're not gonna get all of the fat out of there, but what I do, and this is, you know, can be considered a little bit much, so warning, you, you, can, you can, at a minimum, just cut that out, be done and move on. I've got a brisket trim video on the Meat Church YouTube channel that shows you this, what I like to do, and a lot of restaurants here do, where I'm gonna take my knife right here in this fat section, I'm actually gonna remove all of this because uh, I'm just gonna tell you, there's actually not that much meat right here. There's a little bit of meat, so I'm gonna sacrifice this whole thing to make the brisket nice and smooth and aerodynamic. Again, you don't have to do that. You could just cut this fat out right here and be done with it. But since I'm gonna utilize this fat, I'm going to opt to go really aerodynamic, take this off, and then I'll grind this up and turn it into something else. Can you freeze trimmings for later? Can you freeze trimmings for later? Absolutely. See, I'm on my tiptoes. So you're gonna have a little, we're gonna flatten it out a little bit, but when you look in here, there's, I mean, it's like, I don't know, a few ounces of meat. That is amazing grind, so I'm gonna save that and grind it into something else. So I don't mind doing this. But again, not to beat a dead horse. If you aren't gonna use it, then just cut this fat out and go on. Uh, can you freeze your trimmings? Absolutely, we do that actually, because we won't normally get enough trim out of a brisket to do what we wanna do with it. So we just put this in food saver bags, throw it in the deep freeze, and then we get a bunch, you know, we'll get a bunch at once to do whatever we're trying to do. Make chili, sausage, you know, whatever. Is Wagyu worth the extra money? That's a loaded question right there. Is Wagyu worth the extra money? 
I mean, it depends who you ask. So there's, there's different percentages of Wagyu. I mean, you can go to the supermarket and get something that says Wagyu that's not nearly as good as this, I'll tell you that. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, I'm, by the way, I'm feeling this, I'm kind of shaping it, and where it's actually kind of still hard, I'm gonna keep trimming it. You know, it depends. I mean, when we compete, like I said, it's, bar competition barbecue is almost a copycat sport. It reminds me of the NFL. Everyone competes with this brisket, so we all buy it and we all use it. And, you know, everybody that, a lot of people that win do really well with it. Um, but I have gone to the grocery store. Well, let me give you a real example. In our class here, what we do sometimes is uh, we'll bring two briskets out to class and we won't tell anybody that there's a difference. And we say there's, you know, slice A and slice B, what do you like better? And we basically do a blind taste test. And when, you know, 30 of 40 people said slice A was better, I said, okay, of you 30 people, was it two times as good as slice two or slice B? And nobody raised their hand. I said, well, that brisket costs twice as much, so you decide. But yeah, I mean, Wag Wagyu's great. Um, you know, if you can afford it, it's great. Is the cost of Snake River worth it? Is the cost of Snake River worth it? Yeah, Snake River, of Wagyu products, Snake River's like, there's no questioning it, right? You know exactly what you're getting. It's amazing, amazing family that runs the ranch. Uh, it's a great product. Like, I can't say enough good things about them. Okay, that's, we're nice and pretty flat on that. Um, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna show you guys something. So what we talked about in the beginning. So flatten this out. Down here on this flat side, that is really small. I would tell you at a minimum, I would at least do something like this because that, I mean, that's, there's nothing there. And then as you can see, it gets a little bit thicker as time goes in. I'm gonna make a cut that you will consider aggressive, but I'm gonna show you what a restaurant would do in Texas, a barbecue joint in Texas. They would take their knife, they would actually kind of angle it so I'll explain to you why you see briskets that look like this in Texas. And we don't want any pointy edges, so we're actually going to round that off. Normally I do that on the fat up side so you can kind of see a little bit better. But that's pretty prime meat I cut off. Again, I'm going to grind it up. And I'm just going to clean up this edge. And I'm going to explain to you why we're doing this this way. All right. You come to a barbecue joint in Texas, there's a famous list called the Texas Monthly Top 50. It's the supposed best 50 barbecue joints in the state. When you go in there and you order brisket, it's got to be amazing. Every single slice of that brisket has to be perfect or you're gonna go on Yelp or somewhere and rip them. If they don't cut off these ends where it's really thin and they go to slice that, the bite for the customer is not gonna be very good. So they're gonna do this, so we're, see what we're left with? Much thicker brisket. And that's what we've cooked for you today. But again, like fifth time I've said it, use all of this stuff um, so there's no waste. If someone cooking brisket for the first time, what size do you recommend? Someone cooking brisket for the first time, what size I recommend? I mentioned I like 15 pounders and why I like 15 pounders, but um, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 pounds, start with a 12 pounder. I don't like to go like too much smaller. I, you know, the smallest I ever really go is 10 and that's pretty rare. I'll tell you, I could sit here and whittle on this thing all day. Just keep filling it, filling some kind of fat stuff and hard stuff and pull it off. All right. Last call for trimming questions. We're going to go to the meat side. We're going to season this. Okay. So you see the nice, pretty shape of that? I kind of don't. If I want to get real picky, I'd a little bit there. All right. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to season with two seasonings. We're going to use Meat Church Holy Cow, which is our beef rub, and we're going to use Meat Church Holy Gospel, which has a hint of sweet in it. More about that in a minute. This is a combination that we use in competition, and this is uh, primarily the recipe we, we teach with. Uh, you can just use the holy cow. That's what I did for a number of years. And then I kind of saw the value in layering a different flavor profile. And actually what happened was a lot of competition guys were doing it. And I realized that it was really good. And we started doing it. How do you get a dark bark? How do you get a dark bark? I'm going to show you that in a minute. We're going to talk about that when we talk about the cook process. Um, the holy cow will help set that off. It's a really good rub to help build bark so at the base uh, a lot of people use this just because of the bark that you um, that you can get by the way all these rubs are blended within the last week if you order from eatchurch.com uh, or when we ship to our um, retail partners uh, we're small batch craft like this stuff 
doesn't sit around um, for more than a week. So I like to season about 18 to 24 inches up. Why is that? If you're up higher, you get a really even application. If you get down here and season right here, you can get splotchy. So I'm going to go two to one, holy cow to holy gospel. And I'm just going to pat it dry. Look, if I had all the time in the world, I would season this side and let it sit half an hour, flip it over, do the same thing. But since we don't have you know, all that time, I'm just going to kind of pat it here. The question is, do I use a binder, mustard or anything? I don't on brisket, you can. I use binders on a lot of things. I just put out a baloney video last week and it had a binder. Here's why, I'm gonna show you in a second. To me, this is a two-sided piece of meat. I just kind of patted it and when I go to pick this up, you're gonna see most of the seasoning is adhered. Binders are just to help your seasoning adhere to the meat quicker. Uh, if something needs it, I go with it. Um, we, what else we did? Last week we did a turkey on our Instagram and we slather in Duke's mayonnaise because you need something to help the seasoning stick and that acts as a moisture barrier. Okay, I'm going a little bit, a little bit lighter with the Holy Gospel because I've already got a really good base rub. So this is gonna be just a little, you know, sprinkles on a cupcake. And for those of you that ask how much rub, I mean, this is kind of liberal, but this brisket's gonna cook a long time. It's a big piece of meat. Look, I'm in the seasoning business. This is what I do. So, I, it, you know, I don't, sometimes we'll get some criticism like, why are you seasoning so much? I mean, I've never had somebody say you over seasoned that. Oh, this is this is what I think is a perfect amount. So I'm I'm patting it since I don't have, you know, 30 minutes. Which, by the way, I usually talk about cooking a brisket on the weekend. So let's say Saturday. All this trim work I just did. I mean, I recommend doing that on Friday night. Why not? Because you come home from work, or we're not at work. We're at home, so you're home anyway right now. So you know, crack open a beer, trim your brisket. And you can season it if you want. It won't, it won't hurt a brisket to season it early. You don't have to. Put it in your fridge and get up in the morning and cook it because nobody wants to do this, what I just did at you know, five in the morning. Okay, so watch how little falls off this brisket. Like two particles fell off. That's why I don't use a binder. Uh, my methodology to teaching barbecue is kind of to give you the sim most simplistic way to make amazing barbecue. So I'm not trying to give you a you know, out chef you or give you a two or three page recipe. If you don't need it, then I'm not going to tell you to use it. You can use it if you want, nothing wrong with it, but you don't have to have it. I'm now doing the exact same thing on the back side, on the fat side. Do you ever season and let sit overnight? Do I ever season and let sit overnight? You can. Our rub is so fresh and bold that I think, you know, we, normally we season this stuff and we put it on the pit and we go. It's going to come off the trigger. You're going to be like, okay, it tastes good. I don't think it was over under season. I, I feel good about what we do. But like I just said, if you want to do it the night before, you certainly can. I don't, it's not required. Other rub combos besides these that you recommend? Other rub combos. I like the Traeger Prime Rib Rub. Um, I'm messing with a little bit of coffee rubs right now. Um, Whiskey Bent's got good rubs for brisket. Okay, there we go. Bam. I'm gonna pat that in just a little bit because you know for time's sake. What Traeger rubs would you use for a brisket? I like the I like the prime rib rub for oh what, sorry what Traeger rubs are good for brisket. I I like the prime rib rub myself. And the coffee rub. Okay. Questions? More? More questions? Good. Okay keep going here all right so now it's time to talk about cooking this beauty and putting it in the timberline we're not actually going to put this in the timberline because we only have 25 more minutes and you know this can't be done in 25 minutes so I'm gonna set it aside we're gonna we're just gonna kind of set this over here let it hang out So now we're going to talk about how do we cook it. So if you follow the recipe, I cook at 275. Again, is it the magic number? Not necessarily. I don't care if folks cook at 225, 250, 275. When we compete, we start our briskets out 325 to 350 for the first little bit, and pump those briskets up. So there's a whole bunch of ways to skin a cat, as, as we like to say. 
Um, but if you just follow the recipe, what's in the app, really, it's a, it's a very simple two-step process. So 15 pounder, cut down to 12, 13 pounds, cooked at 275, you can get that done in around 10 hours. So you're, or, or so, right? You're gonna, you're gonna put your meat in the, in the Traeger and it's gonna cook for six hours or so. We'll talk about that more in a second. You're gonna wrap it up. You're gonna get it through the end of the cook till it's probe tender, rest it and enjoy it with your family. But I'll tell you, and this is a big tip, you don't always have to have your head stuck in that recipe. Matt's recipe says cook at 275. So adjust this recipe to fit what's going on in your life. I made a really cool video with Traeger last year called the weekday brisket that's on our YouTube. That the point of that is maybe I don't want my brisket in 10 hours. Let's say I want to have a brisket on a Tuesday and I'm normally at the office when the pandemic's not going on. How could I possibly get that done? Well, what we did was we put the brisket on uh, the Traeger at 190 degrees overnight for 7 p.m. at night. It rolled for 12 hours till seven in the morning. Got up, walked out here, opened this exact timberline and the brisket was, I don't know, 160 degrees, I'm not sure. We wrapped it in butcher paper, didn't touch the temperature, went off to work. From our app, several miles away from the house at noon, because I wanted to eat at supper, we increased the temperature of our timberline to 250 degrees. The brisket finished, I believe, in around four hours. Uh, I hit keep warm, which takes your Traeger uh, to 165 degrees, and then off we, you know, off we came home. So an hour later, in the video, you'll see I pull it out. Now I've got a brisket that's been cooked, you know, I don't know, 20 hours, right? Not 10 hours, and it was the same size. But I lowered that initial temperature to adjust my lifestyle. And I could have let it kept going past noon, you know, if I wanted to eat it even later. And it yielded an amazing product. So I encourage you to take the timeline and adjust the temperature to meet when you need to eat, okay? And there's other things to keep in mind as we talk about cooking this. You know, do we wrap in paper or foil, which I'm gonna to get to, and foil will help you speed the cook up should you need to do that. So you've got a lot of tools at your disposal uh, to kind of meet what you and your family wanna do. All right, so what we're gonna do is, is we put our brisket on earlier at 275 degrees, and thanks to the magic of TV, um, we actually have a brisket in the Traeger that has been cooking for somewhere around seven hours or so. Uh, and so I wanna show you that, because I wanna show you what you wanna to start to visually look for. And everybody needs uh, an instant read thermometer, whatever brand you use, even though your Traeger comes with what I call a leave-in thermometer, a probe thermometer. We will have this in our brisket, you know, while it's cooking. Um, but to me, the, I call that a directional probe. That alerts your app, tells you like, hey, you know, start paying attention to your cook. Um, but these, these thermometers are, I'm going to do two things with. One, I'm gonna tell you not to look at the number. I'm gonna tell you to kind of just probe the meat as you're cooking it to get a feel for So the visual cues of what the brisket looks like is it's starting to bark up. Probe it to feel it, so, you know, feel how it's doing. And then look at the number and say, hey, I'm at, you know, 165 degrees. It's time to wrap this thing. Um, same thing at the end of the cook, right? Uh, when we think that brisket's tender, I'm gonna want you to put your thumb over the number and feel the brisket and determine if it's tender without looking at the number. Don't worry about what the recipe says. Go by what your brisket looks like. That thing's talking to you. What do I look like? What do I feel like? That, you know, you're, you're cooking with emotion and feel your eyes and uh, things like that. So anyway, let's open up to 1300. So we've got two pieces of meat cooking here. We'll focus on this brisket here. This brisket is in fat up and we're going to talk about that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and see what this one's at. This one's in the 150s. We, were, we had the temp a little low earlier, trying not to overshoot it for, for what we're trying to, uh, to do here. But let's talk about the differences in fat up and meat up. So we went in meat up. Um, the reason for that is it's the traditional Texas way to cook a brisket. When you come to Texas, you're going to order brisket, either fatty or lean, and it's going to come out fat up just like this. So all of this salt and pepper seasoning um, right on top of, uh, of that fat, this fat rendering in the cook right here. So see this fat, this fat rendering and this seasoning on top, that creates the most superior bite. Can I cook it meat up? Absolutely. If you want to cook meat up, you can. When I compete, I cook meat up. Why do people cook meat up? Meat up presents better. If I cook meat up, I'll likely develop a little more of a smoke ring on the meat side. So when I go to build a turn in box, I've got amazing bark but I have this, you know, beautiful, Tuffy Stone told me once, you know, 
you're not supposed to judge on a smoke ring, but a good looking smoke ring sure is sexy. And that's the case, it's the truth. If you sat down at a, at a judging table and five guys had a smoke ring, one guy didn't, you can't help but think that the smoke ring guy with no smoke ring might not do well. Um, so it just looks really pretty in a turn in box. I'm not getting into, so I'll, I'll, I'll debunk myths. People, you know, go on Facebook and talk about, well, where's your heat source? In, the, in, in a timberline, it's right here in the middle, so you need to cook you need to cook fat down. I don't believe that. I cook fat up all the time. I can put six briskets uh, in this 1300 all fat up and it turns out some of the most amazing brisket product I've ever cooked. With all that said, if you like cooking meat up, that's totally fine. And like I said earlier, if we're gonna trim out this brisket for burnt ends, then you might want to cook it meat up to make it easier on you on that cook. But anyway, at this point, this you, know, you see this bark has developed really nicely really nice and thick down here and it's time to wrap it so we're, we're actually gonna wrap it now where's the, best place to insert your probe? where's the best place to insert your probe great question so with the with the um, built-in probe on the grill I'm right here in the heart of the flat middle of the flat. I'm never temping the point. Okay, you're cooking this to perfection. If you cook this to perfection, this will be where it needs to be. If you're temping up here, not paying attention to this, you're likely going to dry the flat out. By the way, here's, here's a little puddle here for me. When I did that little trim off at the end, when you don't trim off the end, your meat's going to curve up. You're going to create a big seasoning puddle like that. It's okay. This is telling you the kind of that's, that's kind of where that comes from. Let's, let's talk about wrapping for a second different ways that you can wrap. You can wrap in heavy duty aluminum foil. I'm going to shut this for a minute. Uh, you could wrap in heavy duty aluminum foil. You know, we buy this at Sam's or Costco. I would get two sheets of this. Um, or you can use a pan. Um, you could use like a, you know, like a, a, a disposable steam pan. You can actually put your brisket in here, just foil over the top, or you can use two pieces of foil um, just on the brisket itself. I tell people, if you haven't cooked brisket, if you're intimidated by it, because it's, you know, 60 bucks or how much it is you don't want to screw it up you've never made one you're struggling with brisket i would go foil or pan to start with because you're going to capture all the jus that comes out of that brisket and that's that's an ally for you after the brisket's cooked you're likely not going to dry it out and when you take make your slices you can dredge those slices through that jus and it's going to be super good so and you can also put things in a wrap you know when you make um pork ribs when guys wrap they put things in the wrap like brown sugar butter some people like to put stuff in their brisket wrap. If they inject it, they'll pour leftover injection in it. They might put broth in it. I've seen people put beer in it, whatever. If you foil, you can do that. Do I spritz? I don't spritz, um, but you can. I don't spritz during the cook, only if, if I run a, you know, so Traeger's retain moisture so well, I don't think it needs it. Some guy cooking on his uncle's offset stick burner that leaks all sorts of stuff, he might need it. But if you look at this thing, you see how wet it is? I don't, it doesn't need it to me. If you spritz, the more often you spritz, the slower the bark is to develop, totally fine. What a lot of my Texas buddies do is they'll spritz it right now when they put it into the wrap with cider vinegar. So that's an option. Um, little tip, we use cotton gloves that we pull like latex over the top. How do you develop a super dark bark? How do you develop a super dark bark? You start with a good rub that can build bark. You um, uh, I skipped over cooking wood. You, you cook with a heavy smoke pellet, so we'll talk, I'll talk about that while I'm wrapping. And you take your time. If you're not getting bark, then you know slow it down. I'm gonna rip off two pieces of this while I'm doing that. I'll talk to you about what we cooking pellets. So this is 18 inch wide unwaxed butcher paper. So the key thing is that it's unwaxed. Also Texas trivia, this is considered pink paper, not peach. Some people don't like saying pink, they don't think it's manly enough. But with Mito Bandito on it, you can't go wrong. Okay, I'm gonna lay this butcher paper out. You gotta overlap it just a little bit. I'm gonna put a, let's just put a knife here. That'll be safe, real safe. While I'm getting this out and talking about the wrap, Ooh, look at that. 
foil versus paper preference. I prefer paper, but I'm a traditionalist in Texas. So I kind of gave you the different options and things you could do depending on your circumstance, but I love paper. And, I, and the one big thing I did not tell you, the major difference, why do we wrap in paper in Texas? All this amazing bark that we've built, when you wrap in paper, the paper's permeable. And so that the, the brisket and the bark can breathe through the paper and you won't lose it. When you wrap in foil, whether it be a pan or the heavy duty foil, uh, you're basically steaming the meat and that's okay, but when you open it up, the bark is just gonna be really shifty. It's gonna taste awesome, but you'll lose some of the bark that you, uh, that you were building. Um, you know, how do you wrap this? There's a bunch of different ways to do it. The, the most important thing, of course, I line my paper up off-centered. Most important thing is to just wrap it tight. Like I said, this is 18-inch paper. You can also use 24. What internal temp do you have? Really good question. Man, I really got my paper dimensions off today. There we go. What internal temperature do we wrap at? So we wrap at like 165 degrees normally. So this would have been there. I lowered the temperature just a little bit, just um, magic of TV, wanting it to look right for you guys. I want it to hang out a little bit longer, uh, but about 165. When you get to 165, some people say that your meat can't take on any more smoke at that point anyway. So that's why we wrap that number. So I, I just pulled this over and tucked it under, and now I'm pulling it tight gonna wrap it back over this is not my best job of uh, wrapping paper I've done here this is like swaddling a baby just get that little brisket baby in there nice and tight not one of my better wrapping jobs but it'll it'll do nice and tight okay we're gonna go back on I'm, it, you can take your probe and put it right through the paper foil, whatever you're using, and you're good to go. Let's talk about smoke pellets, and I just got asked, do I use the super smoke setting? All right. In Texas, I mentioned we, or I don't know if I mentioned, we make our barbecue with post oak. Therefore, on a Traeger, I use oak pellets. Oak is a very smoky wood. Uh, I want maximum smoke uh, in my beef. So when I'm cooking beef, I'm cooking with oak. Other good alternatives would be the Texas beef blend. Uh, mesquite is really good. It burns a little hotter and kind of has a distinct taste. I like the big game blend. Um, and if you want to start coming down in terms of smokiness, hickory works. Uh, hickory is really, I think, like the best all purpose. So love that. Start coming down less smoky would be pecan. I want more smoke than that. So I try not to smoke with pecan. I use pecan on things like poultry and things like that. So point is I want big smoke, I'm going oak. So when I bring my pellets in, I'm bringing in tons of oak, a uh, little bit of hickory from how I grew up in the south, and some Texas beef. That's pretty much all I, all I use. And the question on the Traeger, do I use super smoke? Yes. Anytime I'm trying to impart smoke into something, so it could be if I'm making bacon, uh, if, I'm, if I'm smoking bacon that I've cured, I'm, I'm hitting the super smoke. Uh, when I gave the weekday brisket example earlier, since I was rolling in 190, I want maximum smoke in there. I hit the super smoke. So if I'm at 225 or lower and have an opportunity, bam, I'm hitting the super smoke. Rolling. I want to mention one more thing before we go to talk to you guys about, about burn ins. So on the anatomy of the brisket, um, you could start to see, and I know I already seasoned this, but the point meat right around here, after I started to trim away, you could kind of see it a little bit more. Uh, I mentioned to you that we cooked this whole because I wanted to focus on showing you a very traditional Texas brisket. We're going to cook it whole just like what you've seen. So I didn't do the additional trim to expose the point to show you burnt ends. Uh, but with that said, um, we do have some separated point that we cook so that we can make burnt ends. Big thank you to Tito's for keeping me hydrated. Someone asked what's your go-to cocktail while cooking? What's my go-to cocktail while, cook, while cooking? Well, if you know me, you know it's Miller Lite. Um, but when we get to the happy hour with Chad, 
15 minutes after this, we'll no doubt be drinking an old fashioned with TX whiskey. This is hot. Let's talk brisket burn-ins. One of my favorite bites in barbecue. This is a brisket point, so that is this section right here. I know this is fat up, but you're, all of this section right here is what this is. I mean, it's actually that is laid just like that. So here we go. Here's this piece right here, okay? But for demonstration purposes, we completely separated this out uh, so that we could show you how to make Kansas City burn-ins. If you want to make burn ends and you've trimmed your brisket out uh, and you want to pull it out, you want to pull your burn ends out of the same brisket, what I would do now that this brisket is back in the timber line wrapped up, when you get around 195 internal temperature, I would open it up and I would remove the point to this and then I would make my burn ends, wrap that flat back up and put it back in to finish cooking. Okay. What do you do with the good old stall? So what do you do with the stall? I mean, I think a, a lot is made of the stall and I think it's like overblown because it is what it is, right? Your brisket comes out of the fridge, 30, let's say it's 36 degrees. And I always tell this story that your, your brisket's gonna go from 36 degrees till probably 203, right? And it's, it's just climbing up nice and smooth. And when you get in the 170s, it kind of flattens out. It just takes longer to get through there. Well, I, personally, I don't really care. You're gonna get through it at some point. I mean. It, it just means, you know, it's slowed down for a little bit of time and you bust through it. If you wrap in foil, you bust through it quicker. At the wrap stage, after I wrap this brisket at 275, if I had that foiled, I could finish it in two to three hours. If I wrap it in paper, it's probably three to four hours. So it just kind of shows you time difference. All right, let's take this point and I'm going to use um, a, a clean fillet knife. Can you get me one more of those half pans? Half pans. One of those. Thank you. If you stall at 150, do you wait it out or do you go ahead and wrap it? I, so do, the question is, do I, if I stall at 150, do I wait it out or I, do I wrap and go? I don't worry about the number. I'm looking at what that brisket looked like. That brisket looked like it was ready to be wrapped. I probed it, it validated what my eyes told me, and then I went. I, I'm not going to be looking at, oh, that's at 150, I want to wrap, and the and temperature is what it is. I want it, I want it visually to get where I want it to be, which is nice and dark. And by the way, the bark that we're building will continue to build while it's in this paper. That's not the darkest that brisket's going to be. So let's make burn-ins real quick. What you're going to do is, is make one inch slices. This is pretty tender. If, if you, um, when you pull this off at 195 degrees, you probably need to set it aside and let it cool off just a little bit uh, because it's going to be pretty hard to handle. And you just want to come back across the meat and make, you know, just kind of, I go one by one cubes. I think those, uh, you know, are kind of easiest to bite. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw these in a, in a half pan. We're going to add a little seasoning and a little sauce, and we're going to go back in the trigger. These are hard to beat. I mean, people come to our school and they have these burn ins and they never make a whole packer by itself again. They always make burn-ins, it seems like. Did you watch Tiger King? Did I watch Tiger King? I, not only did I watch Tiger King, but I also watched the TMZ special on Monday, which was a complete rip-off. Um, I, I wanna know what's up with the dude on the jet ski at the end, um, and he's in the new one on the jet ski. So I'm currently trying, if you follow Clay Travis, he posted a, picture of a guy who painted the dude on the jet ski in the ocean. I'd like to commission one of y'all to paint me that snitch on the jet ski uh, in the Redneck Riviera of Florida and reach out to me at madatmeatchurch.com and I will trade you like a lifetime supply of rub to, to paint that painting for me. Free Joe Exotic, okay? Let's get that hashtag trending. <clears throat> okay, traditional Kansas City burn-ins. They have a little sweet, a little heat. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go back to our holy gospel rub. Our, our, our holy cow rub, the beef rub, is salt, pepper, garlic, little paprika. The holy gospel has a little bit of sugar in it, so it works really well with these. We're gonna apply some more seasoning. How long do you let brisket rest before you slice? I 
thought the next question was going to be, did Carol Baskin do it? I know, it's getting a little bit old now, right? What was the question again? How long do you let brisket sit before you fry it? How long do I let it sit? I'll show you that in a second. We're going to let it, how long do I let brisket sit? I think we're doing pretty good on time. I'll show you that in a second. Let's come back to that. Okay, so it's time to add the sugar lips sriracha. No rush. Ooh, this is a thick one today. Is this like Heinz 57 today? We're gonna, you gotta put your thumb on the pickle. Let me put my thumb, I'm gonna put my thumb on the rooster and I'm gonna hit the cow. It's coming. That's gonna make great meme right there. Okay, a little thick sauce today. A lot of people like to thin their sauce out. Ah, we're going. Depends on the sauce that you use. If your sauce is too thick, uh, I like to take my sauce and cut it with a little honey. I shouldn't say cut, that's like a drug term. Uh, I like to thin it out with a little bit of honey. It doesn't really affect the flavor profile and it works really nicely with burn ends. You'll, you'll see that I go through like a box of gloves uh, per lesson. That's why I love my trolls on YouTube who, who think I cross contaminate everything. I'm like, you're not paying attention. We're a good place to find gloves. I mean, this stuff, is, so the, the, where do we get the gloves? I get all that stuff on Amazon. Well, I, I get it at Meat Church Barbecue Supply at 205 South Collins College in Waxachie, Texas, but we're closed right now. So I just want to toss this around. So here's your goal. You're trying to coat these cubes. You are not trying to completely douse these. I don't want an inch of sauce in this pan, right? My goal is to just coat all sides, just coat it. It'd be the equivalent of taking this cube, dipping it in sauce, picking it out. That, I don't want any more sauce than that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to go back in the timber line, same temperature, 275 works. I mean, you can go lower if you want. And then this is really up to you. Do you want to go uh, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours? You need to go until they're nice and caramelized. And I like to reach in and toss them about one time uh, during this next phase. And I'm usually no more than an hour. I'm like 45 minutes. The fat in, these, uh, in this meat will continue to render. The sauce will caramelize and you'll have like an epic bite. All right. What's your favorite Traeger model? What is my favorite Traeger model? Hmm. Great question. Man, the, the um, Timberline 850 is my daily driver for quite some time, uh, but I'm a pretty big fan of those Ironwoods now. They uh, great price point. You know, it's not quite the investment that a that a Timberline is, and um, turn out great barbecue so but I don't have any that I don't like so what was the name of the sauce again the name of the sauce was sugar lips sriracha sriracha okay we're gonna move on to the sliced product the grand finale what temp are the burnt ends done what temp are the burnt ends done? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't temp the burnt ends. They're done, right? They're tender. When you get them to the 195 range, when you're cooking the brisket whole, they're tender. So they're, quote, done. Now we're just locking in and caramelizing that sauce. So once the sauce looks how you want it, you're good to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to slice a brisket and then how to eat a brisket. I like all of you that are texting me right now. Chappy Matt, Chad Ward, you need to get to work. Get ready for your cocktail hour uh, right here in 15 minutes after we wrap up, old oh boy. Okay. I'm not going to the ground, I'm going to my Cambro that's down here. Kind of what? Thermometer. What kind of thermometer do I use? I use uh, Thermopin MK4 Industry Leader. You can go to our website, click Partners, and click on this logo to get the one that I use. But this is the number two tool in your cooking arsenal right behind Meat Church if you're cooking on a Traeger. Oh, probably 
should have kept that out. Okay. All right, this brisket's done. It's been resting. Very important. When you smoke a brisket, uh, pull it off to the tenderness you want, um, which I didn't really get into that. Hold on, before we do that. We're looking for tender here. 20, which is probably usually 203. So what I do is I set this probe alarm at 195 to alert me to my phone to say, hey dummy, start paying attention to your cook. And then I take my instant read and I just start probing it. But again, like I said earlier, I'm feeling for tenderness right here. So when you push in the 170s, 180s, 190s, you're going to have to work to push it in. But then suddenly you're going to push this in and it's just going to like no resistance. It's, there's, it's going to take no effort uh, to push this probe into that brisket. That's when it's done, usually around 203 degrees. Very important, pull that brisket off your Traeger and then put it in a Yeti, cooler, whatever. Um, we have ours in a Cambro today and let it rest for at least an hour. All the juices in the brisket kind of redistribute, uh, let it chill out. You know, you don't want any steam. Like if you cut that thing at 200 degrees, there'd be all sorts of steam going out of it. And that's just moisture that you could have been eating basically. Uh, but another thing is the brisket will safely hold in a molded cooler for hours. Like you could pull a brisket off early in the morning, eat it for lunch, pull it off at lunch, eat it for supper. Uh, if you need it to last even longer, then you can wrap it in a towel or blanket or something like that. But this one is rested uh, for a while now actually, longer than an hour. I hope it looks good. Whew. That's gonna work. So there we are. That'll work. I can bring all that stuff in. We've got a tray of burnt ends that have been hanging out. They look really good. Nice and hot and steaming. Let's set it right here. I like to usually toss these again, like if there's any moisture in the bottom of the pan. Give them one last little toss. Those are going to look super good. See, those look really, really good. But I'm going to show you how to slice a brisket. All right, brisket slicer. All right, so you've got your whole packer. You got your flat, you got your point. You come here you, to, to barbecue joint, you say, I want half a pound of brisket. They say, do you want the lean or do you want the fatty? You need to give this to your neighbors and you need to eat this. This is where it's at. But anyway, um, the grain on the brisket does not run the same direction. So you don't ever want to take a knife right here and just start slicing slices all the way through. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go about, I don't know, a third of the way down the brisket and you're going to make a nice big incision. And you're going to separate the point away because the grain runs a different direction. Um, we'll actually slice this point meat this direction, whereas we'll slice this, this direction. Let's pull it apart. Ooh. I always tell people I'm not an advocate of squeezing your meat, but there's like 10 million people watching this right now, so I just want to show you what you can get on a timberline. I hate when people do that on Instagram, but whatever. Okay. So we're going to slice up a little bit here, and we're going to eat. I think we're going to have some Q&A, maybe. Are we going to have Q&A? I love that fat right there. Mentioned that earlier, that's where it's at. Hit me with the questions while well, I'm slicing this. What's your favorite thing to make on a Traeger? What's my favorite thing to make on a Traeger? Hmm. Man, everything. Well, this past week we made smoked salsa that was unreal. I'm working on the dip section of my website right now. Um, man, I love making beef ribs, to be honest with you. That's probably my favorite barbecue. You guys probably know I make tons of pork belly burn-ins. I mean, I, honestly, anything to get my family outside cooking is where it's at. I'm not too picky. Uh, so spin this, this direction. Thicker slices in your point. So you're going to go kind of number two pencil here, and you're going to go not quite twice that wide here, a little bit bigger because there's a lot of fat content here. Wider slices help help you get that. 
How's your hair holding up during quarantine? That's a great question. How is my hair holding up during quarantine? Um, so I took a shower right before we went live. You can tell I conditioned right here. You see the, the curl? Um, so there's a, this is like a problem. Like It's like I got a Ferrari and I can't get in the shop. Um, so, you know, I reached out to my girl and she's been wanting some crawfish and I said, I'll gladly boil you crawfish to come cut my hair. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Seen a bunch of my friends out there getting their hair cut by their wives. That ain't going to happen. Uh, I love uh, Mrs. Meat Church, Tracy Pittman, but she will not be getting shears near this work of art. So if this thing goes on much longer, like, look, if this thing rolls through the summer, I'm going to be back to my mullet days, which I'm not that mad about, but Traeger, you know, they might not like that look. So stay tuned. Thoughts on the new Traeger app? Thoughts on the new Traeger app? Sick. Y'all want to hear a funny story? They're doing market testing on the new Traeger app down here in Texas this year, and we go pick up my buddy Yalmar, marketing genius at Traeger, tells me, you know, what they're doing, what they're testing with. The next day, my dad sends me a picture, and my dad's doing the testing, completely random. So... If you're watching dad i love the new trigger app step by step it's awesome Ooh, look at that so here's how you check your brisket this this didn't rest enough you know really no there's too much steam here but to me this is what i want to test ah, right here i want the bend do you get the perfect bend without breaking right if you break this test it's probably a little overcooked so that's the first thing sorry i was taking a picture and then you're going to want to do just the slight pull, bam, comes right apart. There's that, look at that right there. So why does Matt cook fat up? That is why I cook fat up right there, just my preference. That's hard to beat. Okay, so let's make a sandwich. Hmm, do you want the lean or the fatty? Both. Why not? I just got off the keto diet, so I can eat more. What's the most unusual thing you've cooked on the Traeger? Uh, reindeer. Most unusual thing I've ever cooked on Traeger is reindeer. I mean, I don't think it's that weird, but my kids were pissed. <clears throat> What's your favorite barbecue joint? What is my favorite barbecue joint? Hmm, well, that's a hard question. I would say Valentina's Tex-Mex just south of Austin. By the way, don't sleep on this coleslaw. Uh, coleslaw. I think that's potato salad. Um, this is a potato salad off the Traeger app. It's a, a warm potato salad uh, that starts on the Traeger. Uh, this is really, really good. We make it quite a lot. Um, so we're going to go uh, with both. That's what I like to serve this with. or what I, It's one of our main side dishes. So I was told to take a very awkward bite. I think that's literally what it said. So here we go. Here we go, Krista. This is for you. I'm going to need a minute. Not mad about it. Damn, that's good. It's like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's all over me. And I don't care. Mmm. Hold on. That's good. Are your rubs gluten free? Are my rubs gluten free? Yes. Man, that was really good. Okay. Y'all hungry? If I ever had a non-barbecue dinner. <laughs> non dinner, pro tip: most professional barbecue guys don't eat barbecue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right before we went live, um, Chad Ward, we had Taco Casa, Super Burrito, Taco Light. Yeah, sushi is my thing. Sushi, Asian food. Y'all can have the barbecue. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm covering that up. Y'all need to see that. I didn't bring a spoon for the <clears throat> potato salad, so. Have you ever tried brine the brisket? 
Hmm. Have I ever dry brined a brisket? I don't do that. I know people that salt their briskets. Um, I do salt brine my steaks and things like that, but I don't want the brisket. A, a good tip though, if you buy a brisket in a cryo pack, so from like a big box store, wherever, uh, you can keep that in, if, if you're buying it for someone that's moving them, like, so let's just say Costco, Costco's selling them all out the same day. You can keep that in the body of your fridge safely for a month. Uh, you can actually go longer than that. I'm not gonna advocate that. As long as there's no puncture in the bag or the bag doesn't puff up and that brisket will wet age and it's really, really good. By the way, brisket dies a pretty quick death. It grays out and dries out really quick. So I won't normally come through and just mow through and slice a bunch up. You wanna slice brisket to order, I say. So just cut off what you eat. If it's just like you and someone else, you're gonna make a few slices. Um, I would make those slices and leave the rest. I mentioned that earlier, wrap it in like food service film, put it in a food saver bag and keep it whole, reheat it whole uh, and then slice as you need it. Don't, you know, try not to cut the entire thing unless you know the whole thing's gonna get eaten. So anyway, have other questions? Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys can fire in more questions. I say we've got five more minutes and again to kind of tease um, the, the next segment. So if you guys hop over to Instagram here in a few minutes, uh, Chad Ward's going to fire up a little cocktail hour and we're just going to have a little talk about what we've been doing today and talk about the cook and how did I feel about this amazing brisket that, uh, just kidding, that we prepared for you guys and uh, we'll kind of talk through all that. you have more questions yet? Best advice for someone just getting into Best advice for someone getting into grilling. I have several pieces of advice. When I was on Pitmasters, uh, I didn't win uh, that episode. I might have won in barbecue since, but uh, Tuffy gave me a lot of advice that I put in my notes on my iPhone, and they're still in there today. So I didn't allow myself enough time for my cook. And he told me overs are always better than unders. It's always to be better to be looking back than looking ahead. And I'll never forget that. So I tell people, you, first off, you got to have patience, right? This stuff takes a long time. Don't be in any hurry. Uh, but secondly, you have to plan enough time. So it's good to prep in advance and plan more time than you need for your cook because you can rest your meat. I always mention, don't call me on Saturday at five o'clock and say my party's starting and my brisket's not done. What do I do? You've got to get it done and you've got to rest it. So don't plan to have your brisket done at five, plan to have it done at three and then rest it or two and rest it. So plan plenty of time. Um, keep your grills clean. Uh, we do lots of grill maintenance, you know, with your Traegers, clean them constantly. Um, you know, the, the buildup in a, in a Traeger or any kind of smoker is not flavor. It's a grease fire waiting to happen. So keep your grills clean. Uh, try to cook everything you can outside, you know, especially for a beginner. Uh, I challenge you, try not to use your inside kitchen. We have a stove in our kitchen and its only purpose is to store our cast iron skillets. So we try to cook everything outside, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I mean, you know, it doesn't all happen outside, but that's the reason we built this big kitchen so that we could cook out here as much as we can have our family outside. We always wrap. Do I always wrap? So like, are you talking like strictly East Coast or West Coast, like Tupac, Biggie, wet West Coast? I do fancy myself a West Coast guy, uh, but I suppose you're talking about brisket. I do always wrap my brisket. There are things I don't wrap, like beef ribs, for instance. I like to take my beef ribs all the way through the cook and I don't wrap them, but it's, you know, it's, you can, you can wrap them last hour or something like that, but I do generally wrap my brisket. We're done. All right the wrap up. So thank you for joining this week's episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. Now I appreciate you guys coming. Um, I want to talk about everything we got here today, where you can find it. All the Traeger products, clearly you can get from TraegerGrills.com or the amazing app. I tell everyone that'll listen, you should have that app even if you don't have a Traeger. All the recipe content coming from my friends in the kitchen there, um, amazing chef shooting content, pushing it into the app. There's nobody else doing that. I've worked with a lot of other people. Nobody else has a team as large as Traeger's pumping that content into the app. Trust me, it's unreal. They won't even use my pictures. Their pictures are so professional. They're so good at it. So get the app. If you don't have it, update to the new one that came out this week. It's super killer. Um, follow them on Instagram, obviously. Um, Krista and team have the best social media in the game. As far as our stuff goes, meetchurch.com. I mentioned earlier we're known for our Instagram. Uh, you'll see us on there here in just a little bit. Uh, doing the live uh, with Chad on the on the Traeger page, um, you know where we yes we're still shipping. We get both of us Traeger and Meat Church are both shipping really fast right now to get you guys taken care of for all your home cooks. I can tell you from a business perspective, home cooking is through the roof right now. Um, we have never been as busy as the organizations as we are right now. So it's really cool to see all you guys cooking at home. The engagement on all of our socials like through the roof. Um, everybody 
I guess with a lot more time on their hands, but it is cool to see, uh, like last week I had Thomas Rhett, Nashville country singer, reach out and say he was cooking, how do you do this? Um, Carrie Hart, Pink's husband, you know, cooking with Meat Church on the Traeger last week. Like, you know, the who's who, everybody's cooking at home right now. So um, you guys reach out anytime. Thanks for watching. By the way, next week we've got another one of these. If this is great and y'all like it, then Traeger's going to keep doing it. And next week is uh, the famous Chad Ward, director of barbecue marketing at Traeger Grills. We'll be doing uh, the Traeger Kitchen Live next Thursday night. So again, download the app, follow us on social. Check us out on Instagram here in a few minutes as we uh, kind of do the wrap up uh, over a cocktail. Can't thank you guys enough for watching. This was a lot of fun. Gave us, I mean, we haven't got to teach in a while, so this was a lot of fun. Um, if you liked it, I hope to do this again for you guys in a couple weeks. So anyway, as I always say, get outside, cook something. <laughs>